so right out of the gate, the C7 Corvette, and in this case, the C7 Grand Sport, have five different primary drive modes. There's a weather mode, which is for wet roads or heavy rain. Uh, there's a eco mode, which is for cylinder deactivation to give you better fuel economy on the highway. You have touring mode, which quiets the exhaust, softens up the suspension, makes the steering very light, and that's for like a long road trip or if you're on some real bumpy pavement and you're just cruising along. Then you have the ever popular sport mode, which opens up the exhaust, firms up the suspension, steering feel gets a little tighter, remaps a couple things inside the car, and gives you kind of that more aggressive driving. And then you have track mode, which everybody assumes, well, if I'm gonna go to the track, that's the mode I should use. And they're partially right. So the track mode itself is, it covers a number of different things, everything from the magnetic suspension in the car to the sound of the exhaust, the steering, etc. However, it's not just those things. There's a whole second layer to the track mode, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, if you bought the car and you never really talked to the dealership and got a full walk through the car, or you didn't spend any time uh, reading the manual or talking on forums or going to a track event, you might not realize that there is a whole second five layers of track modes. And so today I'm gonna talk you through these five different track modes. I'll show you how to select them through the menus and talk a little bit about why you would select one versus another and which functions of the car are enabled or disabled depending on which ones you select. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're probably wondering is when should I use track mode? Um, if I'm in sport mode most of the time and I like the noise and I'm gonna go on a back road in the mountains, should I turn on track mode? And the answer is it depends. So between a lot of the normal drive modes, uh, the car is activating or deactivating or adjusting different aspects of the car as I had mentioned before. With track mode, some of the different modes actually turn things off, things that you might actually want on a back road. So if you're thinking about turning on track mode, I personally would ask yourself a couple questions. Am I at a track? If I'm not, or I'm not on a prepared circuit, you know, with clean pavement and no potholes, probably not gonna turn it on. Am I at some sort of timed performance event? Am I doing autocross? Am I at a drag strip? Am I at a road course? If I'm not, I'm probably not gonna turn it on. And third is, am I somewhere safe where I can really explore the limits of handling in the car? So just keep that in mind. All right, so I've got my two GoPros here. Say hello to each other. Um, and I'm gonna use that so I can show you the menu that you see on the dashboard, as well as I can show you the little selector, and I can talk through some of the different things uh, with a little bit better visual representation. All right, so the first thing, and this, this is pretty important, is you can't access any of the track modes or even change the normal driving mode if the car is off. So I'm in the car, car's running. And you can see here on the screen, I'm in sport mode right now and that's sort of my standard driving mode and it's the one that when you start the car the baffles are actually left open so you get those nice cold starts if you leave it in track mode turn the car off it will actually start back up in touring mode which is silent and the first thing it does is it shuts those valves and you don't get a cold start or at least you don't get a good sounding cold start you get a very quiet cold start all right so we're in sport mode so i'm going to go down here to my little selector and i'm going to turn it once to the right and you'll see that it flips it over to track mode. And so then in the center here, there's this little button that says traction control off. So normally if you press that, and I'll just press it once, you can see that traction control is showing that it's turned off. Press it a second time, traction control comes back on. However, if you press it twice, it puts you into your performance traction management modes, which PTM is what Chevy refers to it as. And these are the different modes that you get within the track mode. And so these don't actually change the performance of the engine or the throttle mapping. These actually give you uh, control over the traction and how the car deals with loss of traction. All right, so the first mode in the PTM modes is wet mode. And that mode is for a very, very wet track. It's for when it's been raining for an hour or more everything is soaked and there's no dry sections of the track. That's when you wanna use rain mode. The slip targets for the traction control are a lot lower, meaning it is much easier to trip traction control so that you don't get really out of control um, and in induce a high speed slide or something. Um, if you're on a track that's damp or it's spitting rain but it's not really wet, you'll have to flip back and forth between trying to figure out if maybe dry mode versus wet mode, which one's gonna give you a little bit better control of the throttle and which one's going to give you enough power without you know throttling things back uh, whenever it detects any wheel spin 
But generally the rule of thumb is wet mode is for a soaked track. That's the way to think of it. So I'll turn this and the next mode here is dry mode. And so what dry mode is, is it's for a novice driver on the track learning and, and getting more confidence, or it's for an experienced driver, but it's their first time at a new track. And so it definitely means it's a little bit more reserved, it's a little more dialed back, it's more aggressive than wet mode for sure, but it's something where it gives you a pretty decent safety net. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed on slip, but not a ton. So, so if you're really slamming on the gas and you're not very smooth with your movements, you're definitely gonna feel this thing kick in. It's gonna dial back the throttle, it's gonna step in and you'll feel it where the engine's not gonna feel like it has full power. If you're trying to drift or slide the car, not gonna happen. Um, and this mode's really a good safety net for you to learn safely and you can drive pretty ham-fisted if you wanted to, not that I recommend it, but that will actually um, help you learn a track while having the full safety net uh, enabled. Um, also, the electronic stability control is in competition mode, so it means things are a little bit more rat ratcheted up, a little bit more dialed, so um, something to keep in mind. All right, so we're gonna turn this again, and the next mode here is Sport 1. So now we're starting to get into the, the really exciting modes. So what Sport 1 is, is this is for an experienced driver starting to really want to set a competitive lap time. So this is this is definitely an aggressive mode. It will give you a fair amount of leeway with the throttle. You can induce some spinning, you can induce some slides, and the car is not going to dial it back. It's going to let you do that. And so one of the big things about Sport 1 is it still has stability control enabled, meaning that the car will when it detects a, a slide or an out of control maneuver, the car will step in and it'll help correct course so that you don't fly off the track. This is a good one if you had a passenger, let's say you're doing an autocross where you have a, another person in the passenger seat. It still has some safety nets. It's gonna keep things pretty safe, but it is there for you to go fast and it will have a higher limit than the previous dry mode or wet mode, for example. Um, so something to keep in mind. Now the next mode here, is Sport 2. And so Sport 2 is definitely the the next ratcheting up here. So Sport 2 uses the same traction control settings as Sport 1, but it has the electronic stability control completely turned off. The car is becoming more and more raw and there are less and less layers in between what you do on the inputs, so the brakes, gas, throttle. And so there are less layers in between you making an input to the car and then the car reacting to it. There's less safety nets. And so in Sport 2, uh, the electronic stability control is turned off, but the traction control settings are still on, so you do have that safety net going for you, that it will catch you if it's trying to spin out, but it's not gonna st stabilize the car if you get out of control, you know, or you in induce a slide. And so this is one less safety net, and it's it's definitely, if you're starting to, to go pretty fast, um, and short of, of kind of the last mode, which I'll get into in a second, this is, Pretty much if you're familiar with a track and you're a pretty competent driver, this is probably the mode you'll stay in if it's good weather on a known track and you're an experienced driver. Which brings us to our last mode here, and that is race mode. And so race mode, it's fairly self-explanatory, but this is basically the Corvette designer's way of making the car go as fast as it possibly can. Everything is optimized for maintaining and getting the fastest forward speed and there's even, it will let you spin out and you need to course correct as the driver on the throttle and your steering inputs in order to keep the car under control. There are no, no safety nets here. This is a lot more bare bones. And this is basically, if you are in a competition event, this is probably the mode you want to be in, provided you're you know on dry pavement. Uh, this even takes into account the temperature of the tires. You need to be on new rubber, so pretty new tires with a lot of tread left. And even with that, you need to be an experienced driver for this mode. This mode basically is the equivalent of everything turned off, um, but it does still keep just the bare minimum of things like mag ride uh, on in the background and and it does have some of the kind of underlying things that cannot be turned off but overall this is the most raw the car will be 
you want to go do a monster burnout, this is the mode that will let you do that. So um, race mode is for setting the fastest possible lap time in this car, driving at nine tenths, 10 tenths, as fast as you possibly can. So I personally haven't used race mode yet. Uh, I've used dry and I've used track one in probably my next event, which is coming up here in a couple weeks. My next event, I'll probably go into sport two, where I'm starting to get more comfortable with the tracks and the places that I've been driving. and. I think it'll be a while before I go into race mode. I still like having some of those safety nets kind of watching over me. Um, whereas race mode is really, it's it's you and it's the most analog, you know, instance of the car. So one other thing to mention here is when you flip back and forth between the modes, it doesn't actually show you that it's selecting it. There are two ways that you can select that mode. You can either flip it to a mode and leave it on. And after about 10 seconds, the menu goes away and it will be in that mode. The other is that once you select a mode, you can then go down to the steering wheel and press the select button and that will drop it back into that mode. It'll select that mode. And so if I go and do that and then I press the okay, you can see it just immediately drops back into the menu that I was on. And now I'm in that mode. It's a little bit counterintuitive because you don't actually press the center button here, which is how you got into those menus. You don't actually press that to select the mode you're in. It's not really well spelled out in the manual and it's something that uh, a lot of people don't realize. So something to keep in mind. All right, so I hope you found that informative. I'm in the process of starting to get ready to do my first track day, do some autocrosses. I just bought a SA 2020 uh, track helmet and I've been starting to talk to track organizations and just learning the ropes and how that works. All right, so I hope you found that useful and until next time, Fred out.